Hello, I'm Greg Jamian, and welcome to Boomer Health at Home. As more baby boomers receive medical services at home, there are many questions that pop up that require sometimes quick answers. I have put together a series of short segments with healthcare professionals that will help explain how things work along with answers to common questions found in home-based care. I hope you find the following information helpful. Hello and welcome to another episode of Boomer Health at Home. I'm your host, Ryan Donlin. Joining me as co-host today is a digital me media specialist for AmeriCare Medical Incorporated, Brett Pulte. Brett, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. So on today's episode, we're gonna talk about estates and probates and what you need to know to make sure you're fully covered. And joining us to offer an expert's opinion on that is attorney James Zellen. James, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Ryan. Well, James, um, you know, our first question is, what's the most common challenges that a family has faced when they lose a loved one? The, beyond the grief that everybody experiences when they lose a loved one, uh, the biggest fight that I see ends up becoming over property and money. Everybody thinks that they deserve a little bit more than they should or, 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 or whatever. I've seen uh, big fights over the smallest things. Uh, you might not think of uh, a lamp sitting in the corner as a, a big deal, <laughs> and it might be a $35 lamp, but I've seen families get in fights over it and spend $25,000 in attorney fees to fight over a $35 lamp <laughs> wow. that you could go and get because it's grandma's lamp or mom's lamp or, or whatever. Sure. Um, this, a lot of times with emotions running high, sentimental items go... Uh, out the window, I go uh, become uh, even bigger of, of <laughs> fights and and even sometimes just family disputes then end up becoming, uh, it just becomes a, uh, a surrogate for another fight. Right. So. Well, yeah, you definitely, we don't want that. In our show, we definitely <laughs> pr promote families sticking together, especially when they need each other the most. So what steps could someone take while they're still living to maybe prevent all that, what you just said? Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing I, su I suggest to families is to discuss uh, their wishes with their family in life uh, with everybody around so that everybody's familiar. Hey, uh, hey guys, I want to make sure this lamb goes to you. I want to make sure this bookshelf goes to you. Things like that. You, uh, you're going to want to make a list. Uh, list, it, list all your items out that are of any importance. Um, make sure people know who things are going to. And if you feel like it's going to be in a difficulty after life, make those gifts in life. And oh. if it's something you don't need, you know what, it's a, a shotgun that I don't hunt with anymore and I want it to go to my son, Billy. Here you go, Billy, you take it now. I wanna make sure you have it. That way there's no fight later on uh, that Hey, is it Billy's or is it Bobby's or is it Sue's? I mean, it. it, yeah. it you gotta, you gotta uh, make sure that the things go to to who you want them to, and and when everybody's on the same page of, of where things are going, it it hopefully will lead to lead to less fights later on. All right, so it's never really too early uh, to start talking about this stuff. Right? No, it's it's never too early, and, and even if it's not property, if it, you have kids and you want to make sure that certain family members are are gonna take care of them if something unforeseen happens I mean those discussions help too uh, to not have hurt feelings later on right yeah and then um, now what are what are some liability considerations that executors and administrators may face well if if the uh, will is probated uh, oftentimes you can help limit your liability with taking out a bond uh, some a lot of times wills allows for the executor to serve without a bond. If you're concerned that there's gonna be a dispute, you might wanna take out a bond uh, just to cover anything. But beyond that, as long as all the steps are followed uh, in 
uh, notifying creditors and, and following the, what the will says, there's very little uh, obligate or um, uh, liability to the executor. And also, if you're concerned about uh, uh, liability, there's uh, you can have a uh, you can take the will through probate in an unsupervised or a supervised path. It's easier and quicker to do it at the unsupervised, but it does it then exposes you a little bit more liability, possibly. But if you're really concerned, you can always go the supervised path. Uh, the court takes a greater uh, uh, stance in the case and make sure that everything's done and your liabilities less. Now, if you have an existing will and something changes or you want to make a change to it, what's that process look like? It depends on, on what you want to do. Oftentimes with the will, if it's personal property, you have kind of a, a list. Your will will reference a list of uh, item, personal items and you, you kind of keep that and you can kind of change that as you want as you go along. Um, there's no need to go back and see your attorney if you want to give the bookshelf to your other kid or you or it's an item that you transfer and now it's no longer there you can kind of cross it off okay. um, but if it's, it's more substantial changes uh, you'd go see an attorney or uh, go to the library to, to and it would be a codicil to make a small change if it's lots of changes you might just tear up the old will and start over and, and do the, a, a whole new will to make sure that it complies with what you're wanting to do. Okay, great. Well, if someone wants to set up a will, what are the first steps they need to take? Uh, most, the, the biggest step in, in setting up any sort of estate plan, will or trust, is identifying the assets that you have. Uh, your attorney's gonna need to know what you have so that he knows how to transfer it. I mean, some uh, items transfer by law, some items don't, but you have to know what's there, what's gonna be a, pro a probate asset, what's not gonna be a probate asset, and, and where you wanna go. So identifying what assets you have, identifying who you want those assets to go to is a, is a step one to make sure you have that, all that information amassed. Your, if you go see an attorney, that's what they're gonna wanna know. You're still gonna wanna know those if you go to a, a library or an online resource to, to create a will for yourself. Uh, so having an idea of what you have and where it's where it, how it needs to get to where you need it to be uh, is the biggest question with with the will in, in getting it done good now you know one question that that is kind of uh, you know come up in my mind mm -hmm. my wife and I had set up a will previously okay. and now we've purchased a house okay. so how would we go about adding a giant asset like that well, your house is going to be uh, titled in, in both of your names. Um, if you, I mean, if, if you just have a will, either way, that asset's going to be a probate asset if you both pass at the same time. If you just pass, it'll go to your wife. If she just passes, it'll go to you. Um, but if it, you both pass, it go into the probate estate. Those funds would then go to any children you have. Um, you don't necessarily have to add that to it um, unless you didn't want it to go to your kids, you wanted to go someplace else, then you'd probably address that asset uh, in your will to, to control where it goes otherwise. Um, but the way the, the default is, it would go to your kids. If you didn't have kids, it would go back up the chain to your parents. If it didn't there, it then goes to yeah. up the chain further to cousins, aunts, type of thing but uh yeah i mean uh, just because you have the house doesn't mean you necessarily have to change your will um but for young families control uh biggest thing with wills is making sure you know where the money is your your assets are going and then also who's going to take care of your children uh you can designate that and who you'd like to, to be gar uh, guardians and conservators of your children Great. Well, I think that's great advice, very yeah, informative. Definitely. Well, thank you for coming on the show today. It's actually all the time we have. But uh, if you at home have any more questions, um, where can they contact you? I can be reached in my office at 248-647-8878. Great. And also, if you have any questions about anything that uh, you've seen on this show or any past episodes, please call us at area code 248-288-2270. Thank you for watching.